Hey guys, Jay here from Cretan Skilled Studios and welcome to the first episode of How I'd Book It. Basically what this is, is this is going to be me taking a fantasy booking spin on the way the WWE or NJPW or Ring of Honor or TNA, well, no, not TNA, has put out some of their decisions recently on some of their shows. It's a way for me to get some more content up on the channel, and I'm really looking forward to it because it's something that just kind of popped into my head, and, and Bob told me, you know what, that sounds like a good idea, and Bob knows good ideas when he hears them, so I'm going to go with it. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking a look today at a, at a match from the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view from this past weekend. Uh, the 2017 Elimination Chamber was shockingly good. I didn't expect it to happen because the Elimination Chamber has never been anything remotely interesting to me. It's usually a uh, major clusterfuck of what's going on. But this one, top to bottom, was a really good show. Even the Chamber match itself, the redesigned Chamber, was really good. But there was one match in particular that stood out to me that kind of bothered me. And that was the Tag Team Turmoil match. So, over the past few months, SmackDown has really tried to establish uh, its women's division as something of substance. Uh, where it very, very easily could have fallen into the same trappings that Raw fell into with Sasha and Charlotte trading the belt back and forth. They tried to establish new stars and show that everyone on the roster was a threat with the exception of Carmella. Um, which is unfortunate because I personally think Carmella is a really talented and talented performer, but we'll get back to that at another time. And they really made it so that all these women were really strong and they looked really good. And it was believable when Naomi won the title because Naomi was now a threat and she wasn't just the girl who danced on the ramp and then came out and lost. She was a credible wrestler. And, you know, congratulations to her. Eight long years of fighting to get to that position and she did deserve it. She, she worked her ass off to get that. But when you look at the tag division, the tag division has really kind of turned into the fact that uh, American Alpha are unstoppable and the Usos are angry Roman Reigns clones. Which works since, you know, they're part of the, the Samoan dynasty and whatever, but uh, they're, they're angry about it, whereas Roman is still nonplussed about everything. And after that, you've got the rest of the division that doesn't matter. And, you know, you can say they're taking steps to establish the Ascension, but if you look at what happened on SmackDown this week, after the Elimination Chamber, American Alpha had a rematch with the Ascension, and the Ascension got squashed again. So it's right back to the only ones that matter are American Alpha and the Usos and the rest be damned. So here's how I'd book it. Start the show. You've got your pre-show for a reason. This is the time for you to set up new storylines. And during this uh, during this pre-show, you find uh, Brazongo laid out. And I use Brazongo because it needs to be a face team. And you can't get rid of Slater and Rhino. And obviously you can't get rid of American Alpha because they're the champions. But Brazongo are kind of faces, kind of... I guess. But you get rid of them. You knock them out. They're, they're laid out in the back. Uh, their, their tickets have been ripped up. And they're destroyed. Uh, and then you get to the match. So rather than Brazago and uh, Slater Rhino starting out, let's let's just start it out with uh, Slater Rhino and the VOD villains. They put on a good 10 minute start because that's, that's how it should go. Maybe 5 minutes. We'll say they give a good 5 minute start. And Slater and Rhino eliminate the VOD villains and that's fine. The VOD villains are built up. They look a little bit stronger. They're not just immediately squashed. Next out against Slater and Rhino. You bring out the Ascension. And the Ascension dominates Slater and Rhino. They, they, they very smartly take out Rhino as soon as they get in and leave Slater in there to be a ragdoll and get wrecked. So what happens now is the Ascension are built up to look even stronger than they have been and they look like a credible threat. Out comes the Usos. So you get to the point where you have the Ascension and the Usos. And the Ascension and the Usos proceed to beat the hell out of each other for the next five minutes, let's say. Uh, the Ascension are shown to be even bigger and badder than they were against Slater and Rhino. Uh, they're shown as a credible threat because they can take out a team that's been built up as something that is dangerous and worthy and scary in the Usos. And the Ascension somehow pull out a victory. Now, what you do here is you do the spot where American Alpha was taken out by the Usos. The Usos proceed to beat down the Ascension after the match and just kick the crap out of them and, and make it to the point where they are beaten, battered, broken, and bloody like the, uh, the Usos left American Alpha. So after that, out comes American Alpha looking to get the quick win over the Ascension. They can show that cocky side that they've been trying to get with them lately uh, where they're showing off a little bit. They're, they're bragging a little too much. They're, they're acting against... Not, I'm not going to say heelish, but they're acting um, they're acting like Attitude Era faces. You know, a little too cocky for their own good. A little too Michaels and, and not enough Foldy. So American Alpha come out. They end up having a pretty good match. The Ascension get back into it. They don't end up winning. 
Uh, they go for the follow man. They hit the follow man on Jason Jordan. Jason Jordan is about to get pinned, but Gable comes flying off the top rope, breaks up the pin. Uh, Jordan throws Victor into the ropes. We get a grand amplitude, and American Alpha wins. Now, we're left there thinking that they've won because Brazongo is out. And what happens next is the Usos come back in and again beat down American Alpha and take them out to the point where they are just destroyed. There's nothing they can do. So you continue the American Alpha Usos feud because that is where the money is. Let's face it. They are the A-plus teams. They are the grade A quality Kobe beef tag teams in the, in the division right now in SmackDown. But you get it to the point where you can take the belt off of them. And the last team to come out is the Revival from NXT. The Revival come in, they hit the Shatter Machine, and they take the tag titles. And it's revealed that they're the ones that took out Brazongo. And eventually what you get is you get a position where you've got the Usos and you've got American Alpha who are able to continue to fight each other and continue to look strong. And hell, even go into a point where you make it a series of matches for them to become the number one contenders for the Tag Team Championship. But at this point, now you've got the Revival who are broken away from everything. They've got a, they've got a feud set up with Brazongo, and you have an opportunity for them to have feuds with everyone else on the roster, too. They could very easily go in as heels against heels. They've shown that against the Authors of Pain in NXT. So they could easily fight the Authority, or the Authority. They could easily fight the Ascension and the VOD villains. They can go in against faces, especially sympathetic ones like Slater and Rhino. They are perfect foils for cocky, arrogant idiots like Brazongo. And you use this as an opportunity to build up the rest of the tag division, much like you did the women's division. So you take the same method you used for the women's division, and you apply to the tag division, and you build that up. And all of a sudden, SmackDown, which is already the A-plus show, it's so much better than Raw. SmackDown is now must is now can't miss TV. So you've got a tag division that top to bottom is stacked. You've got a women's division that top to bottom is stacked. And you've got a main event and an intercontinental title scene that top to the bottom is stacked. So that's my thought. That's how I'd book it. What do you think? Let me know in the comments, subscribe, and let us know. Until next time, I'll see you.